Hey, this is a review of the big game, the NFL in dangerous times. This book reveals the current culture of the NFL, maybe even the dark side of the NFL. Underneath the TV and the bright lights, there's another scene going on behind the lies and all the political talk. There's huge revenues, growth, greed, and for the author, Mark Leibovitz, he has a Patriots connection. He's from that Boston area and he knows Brady and parts of that team. So he gets to talk to Bob Kraft and Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. So he knows, understands the culture of that. Also, he's a journalist. He does reveal some of Brady's personality and as well as techniques that stay fresh. And Just how big the NFL teams have gotten. It's their code words for the membership. There's gold jackets, there's vacation meetups. It's its whole tribe and cult. They do talk about the concussion issues from chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE, which is adding a whole new dynamic to the NFL, whether it be called weak or the new era. There's protecting the shield and that roughly equates to protecting the integrity of the game. So these, all these NFL owners are protecting the shield or Roger Goodell, the commissioner has to talk in a political way to protect the shield, protect the game and the integrity of it. The NFL is a diverse group. There's characters for each team, how each team's culture is different. There's Green Bay with his hardcore, they can stand in cold stadiums. There's the Steelers where they have like more rough and tough culture. There's the Cowboys, America's team, the big stadium, the money, the most valuable team in the NFL. There's Raiders popularity. There's someone like the Raiders who are from the Bay Area near Oakland where I'm at and they're moving out to Vegas and the stadium's worth like $780 million. So they're going to have LA fans with Oakland fans and new Vegas fans. So it's a big team. There's a ton of money involved. There's the tailgating unity and something unique about American culture is the tailgating where you can just eat dinner, just hang out at the games. You don't even have to go at the game. Even the fans think they are in the game. And finally, Los Angeles got a couple of teams. It took forever. I don't know why. One of the biggest cities in the United States didn't even have a football team until a few years ago. And I see it as a bread and circus. The fans are just spectators. You know, it's, a, it's an escape from life. And this escape can burn over. It can overheat. There's the Kaepernick debacle within kneeling and loss ratings with the Trump and political issues. just causing a lot of controversy over civil rights and justice. And there's something you need to watch Goodell get booed at the NFL draft, which I've seen before. He has other superstars on stage to avoid being always being hated on. And there's new ways going into the NFL. There's female announcers, which I thought would not happen. And there's SJWs making their way in. Pink shoes, whatever cause, pride, whatever they want to do. There's the female crowd. And they just want to be around the guy talk. Since NFL is so much like a violent, barbaric game. And since fans think they're in, they're in the game, they don't deal with the reality of taking action in their own life. They're spectators. They're not in the arena, as Theodore Roosevelt would say. And I'm not that innocent. I've had soccer jerseys, so I'm not. So I've been a part of that stage. And in this section, I want to talk about secrets that I didn't know. There's NFL and church. They have to compete with each other on Sunday. And that could be almost 13 hours of football on Sunday. They can compete with people's time. When people have to work and on Sunday, they can either watch football day or not. Another interesting I found was North Carolina started with about $300 million for their Panther franchise in about 1996. And it sold for about $2.3 billion just recently. The coaches are very powerful just like in college, and they fire fast. There's an annual meeting in Boca Raton, Florida. Half of the owners have homes there, around that much. There's concussion avoidance. They don't want to talk about it, and it's slowly making its way to the, to the public. Owners typically have hot wives. They're showing pictures of some of the wives. They're pretty hot. At least they understand the peak fraternity stages of female. NFL is big business. There's athletes, there's shoes, there's sponsors, there's tickets, there's women, there's stars, and in college as well, it's virtue signaling. And eventually we're going to see the college prospect complex start to change where these football players, they can, they're going to have another league, which they've tried to do before. And they're not really going to school. There's no, almost no point in this university. The university system and colleges are becoming very corrupt. Students are unable to default on the loan. So it does not hold any of these colleges responsible. Get them in and get them out. No guarantee of a job. And now books and YouTube are taking also apprenticeships. And another thing is Far Brett Favre was sacked 525 times. He's probably one of my most favorite players. He always does things with a smile and is like that free spirit on the field. And I did think Roger Goodell started small, but in actuality, he came from a really rich family. His dad was a politician and that's how he got his insight into the NFL. I actually thought he worked his way up, which he did. There's, there's another side to that coin. And the billionaires got egos. These 32 owners, they got egos. Also, there's host city politics. Who gets the money? What will these cities do for that revenue? And the next section, since the guy 
is part Patriot tribe. There was an interesting thing on the one ring where they beat the Atlanta Falcons, they were down by 25 points. So the score was 23 Atlanta Falcons. They put 283 diamonds on that ring, that Super Bowl ring. Awesome comeback. And that's just stands to how the Patriots are. There's the political side. Of course, the Patriots, you think patri patriotism in general, being it a virtue, is more part of the right wing. So Trump and the Republican. There's the Patriot way, their own type of culture. Do your job. Ignore the noise. No days off. And you got to notice no one really smiles when they're paid. They do win though. And some of these are some other thoughts that I have about this book is that the college industry is going to change. It's going to change the NFL dress where the players are herded into the running backs are almost getting ripped off. They do all the work and these players can have brain injuries that they get hurt. Who's going to take care of them? So you got to get that money fat and the college system is just not done. And it's the funniest thing. Roger Dell Goodell gets booed everywhere you go. They are virtue signaling, gay friendly stuff when they don't really have to be. They're just doing it for money. Much of the NFL will be just doing it for money. Be quiet until you get your paychecks. That's what they're telling the plan. And a lot of these NFL players, they're just, how many women are they getting hook up with? They're just, these women are just gonna get pumped up on the market and where the typical beta males are gonna get the leftovers. NBA is the funniest. I don't want to mention names. It's just, uh, that's a crazy, it's a crazy world we're living in. ESPN is collapsing. Much of the commentators are on other YouTube channels and Disney owns ESPN. The NFL is just like gladiators. And what's going to compete with this is esports. Video games are taking up a lot of people's times. They're not interested in TV. And as well, I think NFL will always be popular, but it's going to affect our culture, the American culture. There's a ton of virtue signaling in the NFL. You have to recognize this from players. They're living the high life and the regular typical dude is not. So you're not being helped by being a fanboy. There's Gary Vaynerchuk. He wants to be a jet owner. It's just a, being a big coach. It's an ego thing to be the owner. You know, you're not really in the ring. You're just the owner. You call the shot. And by these contracts, they are just dumping some of these stars on the streets without money. There's a ton of issues going on with this. It's barbaric. There's concussions. There's brain damage. Here's, here's a good quote. No one buys tickets to watch a morality play. So this is straight up bread and circus as we enter the fourth tourney. And I think this circus is just going to continue. Other type of other games are going to suffer. But I don't think the NFL is going to suffer that much. But people will be distracted with these games. And in general, males don't get out into the arena. There's a lack of right of passage. And that is the true game is guys just have to get out there. And I think the NFL is just going to sell the typical male out. More SJW shit, money, victimhood. Being a rebel is not watching. And thanks for listening. I won't read this book again. It's the big game. I do recommend it though. It's a good, pretty good book just to read once.